We've all seen the memes, or maybe I shouldn't say all of us, but there's truth in the saying, I want AI to do the dishes and laundry for me so that I can spend my time on art and writing, not the other way around. And that sums up this project in a nutshell. I'm attempting to build a robot that will help out around the house. It all started about a year ago. As a little gift to myself, I bought a robot vacuum. I've always loved robots, and I figured it would be a fun toy that would possibly be useful to help keep the pet hair tumbleweeds under control. I had no clue that it would be so effective. What I didn't realize is that it would clean underneath things that I wouldn't personally try to fit a full-size vacuum cleaner under, and it did it faithfully every single day. I soon upgraded to a higher model that would empty itself and map out where it's been to clean more effectively, and I was hooked. I began with researching the hardware. I knew that artificial neural nets would be one of the kingpins of the robot, so it didn't take me long to conclude that the hardware I needed was NVIDIA's Jetson Orin Nano. The Jetson Orin Nano is a single board computer, like a Raspberry Pi, but made specifically for AI applications. With a $500 price tag, I had to close my eyes when I hit the order button, but upon receiving it, I was not disappointed. With the help of Dusty-NV on GitHub, link in the description, I was quickly running examples of machine vision, face recognition, large language models, and other systems I will need in this project. And the Jetson performed these at speeds beyond my expectations. I soon started mashing these systems together and adjusting their parameters to create what I really needed. It wasn't the smoothest process. I had had almost zero experience with Linux, none with CUDA, and Python wasn't my strongest language. I come from a C background, and you know how those guys are. After doing this, I laughed myself silly by making a chatbot that was very profane and would argue with me at every turn. I decided it was time to begin giving this technological atrocity corporeal form. After all, the only thing I had accomplished so far was making an irritable Alexa with an eyeball. I didn't have much of a picture in my head of what the robot would even look like. But I thought perhaps form would follow function, so I ordered a hoverboard to butcher for its wheels and motors, and the cheapest brushless motor controllers on Amazon. And in a few days' time, the man in brown pants delivered the hoverboard, and I held in my hands a technology that I could only have dreamed of when I was a kid, and promptly eviscerated it. I hurried to make a simple chassis out of plywood and MDF, and wired up the motor controllers to an Arduino. Then the first problem showed up, and became my headache for nearly two months, because I don't know how to give up. To make the robot operate at speeds that I, as a theoretical adult, deemed to be safe for indoor use, the motors would be running at a very low RPM, well below the speed where the coil's back EMF would be of any help. Under these conditions, the motor controller's PWM duty cycle would equate simply to output torque, and have little to do with RPM. I could give a constant throttle and the robot would move forward silently and smoothly. But if the robot drove onto a rug it would come to a stop. It would need more torque and thus a higher PWM duty cycle to make it move again. Once given this extra throttle the robot would begin to move, but as soon as it got off the edge of the rug it would speed up dramatically. Okay, so this requires a simple feedback loop from the motor to the controller to make it automatically adjust the throttles to keep the RPM constant, right? In a perfect world, yes. But in practice, this wasn't so simple. One by one, I discovered the complications involved in using these motors. First off, they were never intended to be used at this slow of a speed. Whether by design or simply as a side effect of mass manufacturing, the encoder pulses weren't evenly spaced. This caused my RPM reading of the wheel to vary by 5 or 6 RPM every pulse of the encoder. This isn't a big problem when riding a hoverboard down the sidewalk, but when spinning at 3 RPM, that was a giant variance. 
I tried every method I could think of for controlling the motors precisely, but I didn't get the results I wanted. Even once I got it working across different surfaces, even a small change in the required torque on a single wheel would throw the robot off course. The granularity of the encoders was problematic as well. They only offered 90 pulses per revolution of the wheel. Again, this isn't a problem when the motors are being used as intended, but at 3 RPM this means two tenths of a second elapses between encoder pulses. Two tenths of a second before the motor even knows it's changed RPM, let alone how fast it's really moving now. This is where I really overcomplicated things. By turning to machine learning, if I could track enough data on the motor, the controller could learn how to respond to every combination of circumstances and adjust accordingly. Yeah, this is what took a really long time. And almost every try I made, the robot would invariably start to jerk around and the motor speed would oscillate badly. This is when I discovered that the brushless motor controllers were being too slow to respond. They seemed to be made for using with a potentiometer input like a trigger or twist throttle. So the smoothing and noise suppression left me needing a much faster response. So what does a Joe do? He designs and builds his own controllers. Of course. I selected some suitable MOSFETs and found a triple half bridge gate driver, which made my job much easier. Then threw in a PIC microcontroller for timing and some old fashioned 7400 series logic gates to steer the PWM signal and I had myself a motor controller with instant throttle response. After many hours of soldering, of course. Now, I have had people tell me my circuit boards are a work of art. I've even made one that was designed to be showcased. But this one is more of a... Picasso. It works, don't judge me. These performed beautifully, but still didn't solve my problems. It really came down to the motor design itself, so I did what I always hate to do. I admitted defeat. This time I ordered a pair of automotive window motors with wheels already attached. As soon as the man in brown pants visited again, I had my new motors in hand. They are actually quite nice motors, with plenty of torque and a pleasant sound. I was also pleasantly surprised by the tires, which looked quite plasticky in the picture, but turned out to have excellent grip and just the right amount of squish. They are brushed DC motors, so I reprogrammed the picks in my motor controllers, turning them into the most hideously overbuilt DC motor controllers I've ever seen. Mounting these new motors was a little bit more complicated, as their bolt pattern was quite awkward. But using the make it up as you go method, with some scrap plywood I soon had the new motors mounted. And after fitting them and the Jetson to my makeshift chassis, I whipped up a working demo. And then something happened that I hadn't seen for such a long time. Success. Nobody knows how many dreams I dreamed about you. Or just how empty they all seemed without you. Okay, that's enough of that. So that has us caught up to where the robot project is now. I hope you're still watching, and if you are, please do the like and subscribe thing to keep following the project, and also help my fledgling channel out. Thank you, and stay combobulated.